I'm going to call this meeting to order. It's the regularly scheduled meeting of the Transportation and Public Works Committee. Uh, I'm the committee's chair, Councilmember Reich. I'm joined by my colleagues, uh, Councilmembers Johnson, Palmasano, Bender, Fletcher, and Gordon. Uh, we're a full complement and we'll proceed with today's agenda, of which we have seven items. Um, most of the items are on consent. We do have one discussion item. I'll go through the consent items. Uh, but before I do, I do want to make a special recognition of the department's work uh, with this significant Super Bowl event that took place. Uh, the world was watching and we were certainly prepared to deliver and show that this is a city that works and if there's ever a department that can show that it's public works. Um, I want to um, recognize and thank the department for their outstanding effort. Um, that includes the year and a half preparation. It's a year and a half preparation, pretty significant, led by John Wirtschus, an excellent execution of the uh, entire 10 days leading up to and including the big game, focusing on traffic flow, safety, snow operations, as well as some of the unseen and unsung tasks like maintenance of our fleet. Our public works staff worked long hours under difficult conditions to ensure that this event ran smoothly and demonstrated a high level of professionalism and competence throughout. On behalf of the council and city of Minneapolis, I want to thank each and every one of you. It was quite significant and very impressive. Thank you. Um, with the rest of the agenda, I will go through them. Any council member can take them off. Uh, for further consideration, item one is 2018 uh, to 20, uh, 20, 2023 customized safety training and training service vendor pool RFP. Uh, item two is the 12th Street Bikeway project layout. Item three is the University of Minnesota Protected Bikeways project layout. Item four is the contract amendment with specialized environmental technologies for yard waste, street sweeping, and organic material processing services. Item five is the contract amendment with Valley Paving Incorporated for water main offsets. Uh, item six is the agreement with the Minnesota Department of Transportation and Public Parks and Recreation Board for trail, sidewalk, and signal construction on Industrial Boulevard at I-35W. Uh, does anyone wish to pull any item? Councilmember Gordon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I wanted to uh, just do a staff direction on item three. Okay, uh, please just, go forward. Now uh, this has to do with the event protected bikeway and late in the design, it became clear that there might be some more room to do some improvements. And the staff direction is just asking them to explore um, to upgrade the physical protection of the protected bikeway on 15th Avenue Southeast from the candlestick bollard to a more robust uh, form of protection as soon as practically possible. Okay. Thank you. Any further conversation on that uh, staff direction, which will just be submitted with the full six items? Um, see none, then I will uh, move forward all six items. All concurring, say aye. Aye. Senti nay. Those items pass, uh, noting the staff direction for further exploration on one stretch of the uh, university layout. Now we can go to item seven. Director Hutchinson, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. I will be sure to um, probably send along the video recording of your thank you to Public Works. I know how much they'll appreciate their recognition. They worked very hard. Um, we have one discussion item today. It's cold outside, so perhaps we're not thinking about open streets, but it's time to think about open streets. I'd like to introduce Matthew Durdahl, who's going to present the 2018 program. Hello, Mr. Chair, committee members. My name is Matthew Durdahl. I'm the Bicycle and Pedestrian Coordinator uh, for the City of Minneapolis Planning and Programming Division in Public Works. Uh, so the purpose of today's item is to um, ask for approval of the list of routes for the 2018 season. Um, I'm currently bringing seven routes um, for approval and we'll come back um, at a later date very soon for approval of an eighth route. Um, I want to make one note um, on the RCA letter, um, an amendment um, to the description to just remove end dates. Um, and I think the chair has that um, motion. So we are entering our eighth season of open streets. Um, I think we continue to improve open streets um, in a lot of different ways. Uh, it continues to be very popular. Uh, we continue to improve our internal systems to deliver open streets. Um, and it's just an exciting um, initiative um, that I think is received very well in the public. Uh, last year was our highest year of estimated attendance, um, roughly 100,000 people over eight events. Um, again, and that is a, a significant increase over the last season, which was estimated at 81,000. I just want to cover the basics of open streets. I think people are, are fairly familiar with it, but uh, open streets is um, a city hosted event. Uh, city Council passed a resolution noting that um, in December of 2015. And in 2016, we developed two new processes 
One was um, a call for OpenStreet's organizer. Um, and the idea there was to formalize a relationship between the city and an organizer for OpenStreet's. And that has been um, and is Our Streets Minneapolis. And Nick Ray from Our Streets is here. Uh, Nick Ray does a great job of navigating uh, the block event and special event committee um, to make sure the logistics are all set for open streets and then um, coordinates with countless partners uh, to help deliver a great event. And that, uh, that agreement is through the 2019 season of open streets. And then second, we developed an application for route ideas, uh, which essentially is a, is a call for um, an interest in open streets routes throughout the city. Um, and we have gotten significant, well, we have gotten interest in um, new routes and have been able to incorporate some changes uh, based on those applications. Um, a couple of key standout additions are including Minnehaha with the lake event. Uh, last year was the first year for that and it was a, a success. Um, another one was extending the northeast route down to the east Hennepin area. And so I think that's been a successful um, way to get new ideas and incorporate them into open streets. So this year I want to highlight city engagement at open streets. In 2017, Public Works ramped up our engagement efforts at open streets. And we particularly engaged on the 20 year streets funding plan. So we went to each open streets event and also some farmers market events um, and just asked people how they would like to see the city prioritize uh, street uh, investments, um, and we are incorporating those um, that engagement into the criteria. And so that's been fun. Um, staff of TPP have been able to get out to all the Open Streets events and just talk to people. We also are able to engage on particular um, transportation projects in the area uh, that are adjacent to the Open Streets. So just have some pictures. I'll cycle through. Um, just of our staff out there. We got a, a nice tent and some materials just to make it fun. Um, and then second, it's not just public works. Um, a lot of city departments um, engage with open streets. So three on one, CPED, um, regulatory services, um, solid waste and recycling, another division in public works, and then TAP Minneapolis. Um, and there's a picture here. Um, I think that's a, a great partnership that the city offers to events um, to provide essentially free water, um, which is very, very nice on the hotter open streets events. And then also the, our advocates and our advisors um, get involved with engagement at open streets as well. So this is an event called Behind the Big Wheel. Uh, the Bicycle Alliance of Minnesota and our chair, Nick Mason, helped set this up. Um, and what we do is ask um, some of our different um, large vehicle, commercial vehicle, um, providers in the city to to bring out a big rig and open it up and it's a chance to en engage kids um, to just get up in the in the trucks uh, to take a look to see how it works and then we strategically talk to the parents about bicycle safety and pedestrian safety and show people how difficult it it can be to see um, with, when you're up in um, those big trucks and then also bicyclists how to properly cycle around the trucks and to stay out of what we call the danger zones. And we used cones, for example, to, to show um, that how far you can't see. So we put the cone about six feet up in front of the truck and, and you just can't see it. Um, so it's an education opportunity as well as engagement. And then this is um, an example of sort of a demonstration project um, with using temporary materials for bump outs to highlight our efforts at street crossing improvements. Um, so a lot of these types of things happen at open streets um, to engage people on street design and um, other other things. So back to the purpose of today's action. These are the routes that we are proposing for 2018 open streets. A lot of them are you've seen before. I um, mean, that's one thing that we have have noticed is that there is a core set of open streets events that are, are very successful and we have um, great partners. So we have Franklin. Broadway, Northeast, Nicollet, Lindale, East Lake Minnehaha, U of M, and then an eighth event that'll come back to the council very soon, very soon. So this is a context map just showing the geographic distribution of our open streets. I think we cover the city fairly well, and that is part of the criteria that we look at when selecting routes. 
So quickly, I'll go through um, the being in the endpoints. So Franklin is from Portland to 28th Ave South. West Broadway is from Penn Avenue North to Lindale Avenue North. Uh, the Northeast route sort of uh, zigzags, I guess. It's not a traditional um, linear event. And so that starts up on Central Avenue, um, goes over to Monroe on the 22nd Avenue uh, Bike Boulevard, Monroe down to East Hennepin. The Nicolette event is from West Lake down to 46th Street West. Lindale, which is our longest route, after an extension last year, is from 22nd Street West to 54th Street West. Then the East Lake and Minnehaha is from Elliott Avenue on the west to Minnehaha Parkway on the southeast. And then U of M um, is bringing back a route that they did, I believe, in 2015. Um, and that includes 14th Street, University, and then Oak Street down to East River Parkway. So those are the events. Uh, the next steps, again, we'll return with one more route. And then we're working to finalize the dates in the next couple weeks. Um, and then we'll be sort of announcing it publicly on our, uh, our Facebook and social media and city website and that type of thing. That concludes my presentation. I'll take any questions. <clears throat> uh, Councilmember Gordon. I feel like um, I might be out of the loop or something, but there's a lot of mystery about this eighth route. Is this something that we're looking at and have identified yet, or is this is everything fair game? Should we encourage people to start uh, contacting you and from pitching for their route that they want, or uh, um, are we looking at a particular area of town? Any details you you can share, Mr. Chair, Councilmember Gordon? It's going to be downtown, so I mean, we do have it pretty finalized. We just want to get final confirmation from partners. That be so okay, but it'll be downtown. Appreciate. It. A new route downtown to increase the intrigue. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I do appreciate these events and the rigor that we've put around them in the past few years. Um, a lot of the feedback that I've received uh, in my community has been around 35W being so um, under construction and yet the length of the Lindale ev event being 32 blocks. Um, my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that you can actually cross that event. They do have um, crossings where traffic control does operate with the lights. Um, is correct. that correct? Uh, Mr. Chair, Councilmember Palmasano, yes, that's correct. Most of our um, cross streets at signalized intersections are open and staffed with traffic control agents. OK. Um, it, in the in this approval today, are we also approving the dates for these events? No. It said they were to be determined. But will that come back to council? Uh, we were not planning on bringing back um, the dates. Um, we we're working those out um, sort of with our Bessie group and our streets and local partners. Okay. And then could you could you share with me a little bit about the things that come into consideration about something like a 32 block block party, and you know impacting other events that are taking place you know that there's only so many weeks of summer i get that right um but how will you look to mitigate issues with the very long lindale project sure um councilor palmasano i appreciate that question and that is something that um the block event special event group um discuss and takes into a consideration throughout the planning process um and we often look to um, competing events um, in the area or um, maybe events at um, a stadium where there may be um, competing demands for traffic control agents and our traffic staff and things like that. Um, so we do try to balance um, some of those needs and make sure that the dates don't conflict um, with with the route planning. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilmember Fletcher. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to recognize the really good outreach work that uh, both TPW and our streets have been doing. I've actually followed Nick at a bunch of uh, neighborhood uh, <laughs> meetings. I've seen presentations on the Northeast route several times now. I could probably give the presentation. Um, but I appreciate that. I think it's really good that you've made the investment of time to really get out and talk to people and ask about both date conflicts and also sort of get people's feedback on the routes. Uh, I think it's uh, it's been really responsive, and I've appreciated that. So uh, thanks for the good work, both of you. Councilmember Bender. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I also just wanted to thank staff for all the work that goes into this. Open Streets is, um, you know, I think it's become such a tradition in Minneapolis that maybe we forget how significant it is in our city. And um, I think it's one of the most exciting ways that we bring community together. Um, you know, we've been able over the years to add routes in communities where it's really important for us as a city to provide this space for community to come together, to um, interact with city staff. We use it as engagement for street design projects. I know our police department goes out and uses it as another opportunity to improve our relationships with community. Um, and I think the coolest thing to see is the way that so many community organizations and neighbors use our public street space to um, bring art and education opportunities and so many different things into the public realm. And um, I know that the relationships that are built, because we're so careful with engaging community partners and that the events are operated in partnership with nonprofit organizations and neighborhood organizations, that really the effect of them sort of lasts much beyond that event. So I know that it takes a lot of effort to plan these and they're you know, they're so, they're temporary. You know, they're just part of one afternoon. But um, but I really think that the effects are year round and help us reimagine what we can do with so much of our public space that's in our roadway. Twenty five percent, I think, of our city's land area is in our public streets, and it helps us remember that they're not just for cars driving through our neighborhoods, but they're places for the community to gather and support small businesses and do all of these other things. Councilmember Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I echo the sentiment of uh, Council President Bender. I think these are great events. Uh, I have a question around, have we thought about piloting a particular stretch for every once a month or every other week or every week, like some other major cities have had? Um, Mr. Chair, Councilmember Johnson, um, those are, that's a great idea. So we have, um, we have not, we have not explored the option of repeating events sort of every Sunday or something. Uh, there's there's a, some other, I think countries do um, open streets every Sunday, so a car-free Sunday type thing. Um, we have explored a variety of possible changes um, to open streets. Uh, one of those was implemented this year, which was our first winter open streets event. Uh, we've explored <coughs> our considering different times. Um, so we typically do 11 to 5. 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., but we've tossed around the idea of doing a 4 to 10 p.m. Um, and we've also explored longer routes and, and repeating the routes. Um, so I think those are options to consider um, in the future as we sort of continue to evolve open streets. Um, but at this time, we, we haven't explored repeat events in the same year. I'm glad there's consideration for those. I think it'd be great to try those out. So that's my feedback on it. It would be. Uh really great to see if we can establish something regular and I like the idea of nighttime events as well. Uh, I'm also wondering if there's been any thought to sending out notice to those within let's say six blocks of the route. I know that when we headed on Minnehaha Avenue there were a lot of neighbors that didn't even know and by then they'd already had plans they couldn't even make it down that otherwise would like to participate. So has there been thought of a more direct communication strategy? Sure, um, Mr. Chair, Councilmember Johnson, that also I think is a, is a great question that we think about quite a bit. Um, Our Streets does significant outreach um, along the corridor, which includes contacting every, every property owner. Um, so I think we are, we are open to increasing our communications um, in a variety of ways uh, through social media and, and other things. Um, so I'll definitely take that um, recommendation back to the team, the planning team. Certainly, thank you. Any further conversation or questions? Uh, seeing none, um, I think it's definitely a hit. We had unanimous support for it on the council, and uh, you can really tell something's a big deal. Just try to take it away. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so I, I think that's true for all our communities. They're, they're truly beloved, and the fact that it is iterative, and we're trying to squeeze as much value out of it as an organization internally. But I, as Councilmember Bender pointed out, the, uh, our partners in the community are also very creatively figuring out different ways to make it more fun or more useful or more meaningful mm -hmm. uh, as a platform for outreach. And so I think it's really unparalleled in terms of the uh, possibilities. Um, as Council Member Johnson says, the sky's the limit to what we can do with these spaces. But we have a strong foundation and it's deeply appreciated. So thank you. 
Uh, with that, um, I will um, move approval of item seven um, as amended, noting that dates will be figured out through the administrative process uh, before we uh, launch them. Uh, but we will approve the list of routes as submitted. Um, any further discussion? See none, all in favor say aye. 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 Dissenting name, that carries. Thank you very much. And we are uh, adjourned. <laughs>